All right, so first thing we we're doing was um, sketching the slope field for the differential equation and then sketching the solution that goes through zero, negative one. So first off, we'll note that any time that x is negative one, as long as y is not zero, what is our slope? Zero. It would be zero, so anywhere x is negative one, we should have slopes of zero. And then we'll just kind of go in and plug in the rest of the points. So at x is zero, y is one, we're looking at one, x is zero, y is two, we're getting a little less steep, we're looking at half. Um, Let's go zero, negative one. So zero for x, negative one for y is going to give us a negative one. And zero, negative two for y is going to give us a negative one half. So a little less steep. And then let's say at one, one, we're going to be at a slope of two. And at one, two, we're going to be at a slope of one. And then at one, negative one, we're going to be at a slope of negative two. That's a bit too steep. That's better. And at one, negative two, we should be at negative one. Good. Everybody good there? Yeah. All right. And so for that one, you had two points associated with it. One point for all the zero slopes and one point for all the rest of them. Oh, no. Oh, we had to sketch the solution curve also, didn't we? So I believe we actually had a third point for that one. So we had to sketch the curve that goes through zero, negative one, which should look about like that. Um, and so, yeah, that should have been a third point. Third point for the curve itself. Good or no? Good. All right. Cool. Part B. Part B asks us to um, describe all the points in the xy plane for which dy dx equals negative one. Uh, when they say describe, you could describe that using an equation. So if dy dx equals negative one, that means that negative one equals x plus one over y. And that would tell us that negative y is equal to x plus one, or that y is equal to negative x minus one. And so we would say that they all fall on this line. The line where y equals negative x minus one. And that would be just a one point problem. Everybody good with part B? Yeah. All right, part C. Part C just wants us to solve, given the initial condition that f of zero equals negative two. So we'll start by separating the variables. What do we have with x plus one over y, right? <clears throat> so we have y dy equals x plus 
1 dx. We integrate to get y squared over 2 equals x squared over 2 plus x plus a constant. If that equals, write an equal sign. And then we need to plug in our initial condition. <clears throat> um, our initial condition was that when x was 0, y was negative 2. So we end up with a constant of 2. And so we can go back in and write this as y squared over 2 equals x squared over 2 plus x plus 2. And we'll solve for y. So first multiply by 2. And then take a square root. When we take a square root, we have to get either a plus or a minus. And we need to choose which one. It's the minus, right? The minus, because it has to satisfy our condition that when x is 0, y is negative 2. Tell me y equals negative squared x squared plus 2x plus 4. And so the points here were 1 separating the variables, 1 for the correct antiderivatives, 1 for your constant, 1 for using the initial condition to find your constant, and 1 for the final answer. And if you had a plus sign there, you wouldn't get that final point. And the only way to know that that's a negative is by looking at the initial condition, making sure that your solution solves or that your solution goes through that point. Good or no? No issues there, everyone's good. All right, let's take a look at this one. So we've got their differential equation. We've got that it also satisfies this second derivative. Um, and then we're talking about f of x is the solution to our differential equation with the initial condition that when x is 1, y is 2. So first off, we're going to write our tangent line equation for f at x equals 1. So we need to find dy dx when x is 1, which is when y is 2. So that will be 1 times 2 cubed, or 8 for the slope. y minus our y value equals 8 times x minus our x value. Everybody good with that part? That part should have been pretty easy. We've done quite a few just like that. One point there and one point there. All right. Um, next part is use our tangent line equation to approximate f of 1.1. So y minus 2 equals 8 times 1.1 minus 1 gives us y is equal to, that's 0.8 plus the 2, 2.8. Um, one point for the approximation. And then it asks if that's an under or an overestimate. Since it's a tangent line that we're using to approximate, we have to check the concavity, like we've done multiple times now on problems. So we will look at the value of the second derivative at that point. And our second derivative was, let's see, y cubed, so that ought to be 8 times 1 plus um, x squared, or 3 times x squared y squared, so that would be 3 times 1 times 4, so 1 plus 12, which is definitely greater than 0. And if our function is concave up, 
then that means that our tangent line is below, which tells us that it is an underestimate. Good there, any questions on that one? Uh, since it gave us the region from like X has to be greater than one and less than 1.1, I just plugged in the, the one value like you did, but would we have to like test also 1.1 to like see both bounds of the region or is that like completely unnecessary? Um, well, because they don't give a Y value for the 1.1, like they have you approximate it and then it gets ugly with the decimal, but I don't know. I mean, you would you would note that no matter what on that interval, I mean, you probably should have noted that or not actually you're fine because it, the function was concave up at the point where we found the approximation. So that's enough to tell you that it's an underestimate. Okay. Um, I mean, if you want to be extra sure, you can plug the 1.1 in also and see what that looks like. But this is perfectly good enough. All right. I mean, we know it gives us this information here that, that we're between these values. Um, our function is positive. And so if our function is positive, y is positive, which means both of those are positive. One's positive, three x squared is positive from one to 1.1. 1 .1. It's all just a positive times a positive. All right, and the last part. So now we're just going to solve <clears throat> solve the differential equation with the initial condition that f of one is two. So we got dy dx equals xy cubed. Separate the variables dy over y cubed equals x dx. Uh, then we'll integrate. This is y to the negative three, so we'll go up to y to the negative two, divide by negative two. So we got negative one over two y squared equals x squared over two plus our constant. And already there we've got one point separating the variables. We got one point for the correct antiderivatives, one point for the constant integration. Then we'll solve to find our uh, constant. Let's see, the point was one, two, is that right? Yeah, one, two. Okay. So we got negative one over two times two squared equals one half plus C. So we got negative one eighth uh, minus a half there, so negative one eighth minus four eighths, so that would be negative five eighths as our constant. That's four points. And then you get that change back to red. There we go. Um, negative one over two y squared equals x squared over two minus five eighths. Um, you can multiply all of this by 2 to just get negative 1 over y squared equals 2x squared minus 5 fourths. And then I'm going to want a common denominator to take the reciprocal. So, Wouldn't it just be x, x squared because the 2's cancel out? With uh, the. Yeah, the didn't that say x squared? I think it said x squared and then wrote 2x squared for some reason. I don't know. You're right. Um, that's fine. Then we're going to get a common denominator here, which will be 4. So this will be 4x squared minus 5 over 4. Take your reciprocal. So we got negative y squared equals 4 over 4x squared minus 5. Distribute the negative through y squared equals 4 over 5 minus 4x squared and y equals either the positive or the negative square root of this. But when we plug in one, we need to get out a positive two. So this time we'll choose the positive square root. Good. Man. And that looks slightly different than what they have in the scoring guidelines. They didn't get the common denominator. They just wrote one over this whole thing. But I think it looks better with the common denominator and flipping it that way. Oh, 
and this is your fifth point. Good or no? All right. Okay, so we got the coffee pot problem here now. Um, oh, hold on one second. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so we got a coffee pot. Um, no, it doesn't really look like a coffee pot, but that's fine. It's the shape of a cylinder. It's got a radius of five. Um, and there's a picture. Um, H is our depth. And we got the volume of the coffee pot that is changing at negative five pi root H cubic inches per second. Hmm. Um, so, we want to show that dh dt is negative h over root 5. And so we know that the volume of this thing is what? Volume should be pi r squared, so 25 pi times the height, 25 pi h. And we know that our value for dv dt should then be 25 pi dh dt. And the volume is changing at a rate of negative 5 pi root h. So this will be negative 5 pi root h equals 25 pi dh dt. It's just a related rate. And then we'll divide dh dt equals negative. <clears throat> 5 over 25 is a 5 in the denominator. Pi is cancel, <clears throat> and we have a root h in the numerator. So that's part A. That was worth three points. We got one, four, using the negative 5 pi root h and d d t. Uh, <clears throat> one for getting this, one for getting using this, and then one for getting the final answer. Everybody good there with part A, a little related rate problem right in there. All right. Now I've got the differential equation part, given that h equals 17 at t equals 0, solve the differential equation. So we've got dh dt equals, what was it, h over root 5, right? Negative root h over 5. Ne oh, nah, I got that backwards. Did I? That's good. That's good. Negative root h over 5, is that right? That's the wrong way. OK, cool. So. We will separate our variables. So this should become dh over root h equals negative one fifth dt. Uh, integrate both sides. Integral of one over root h, that's h to the negative one half. So that becomes h to the one half divided by a half or two root h equals negative one fifth t plus our constant. And once again, one point for separating the variables, one point for the antiderivatives, one point for the plus c. And then we find our plus c, which was that t equals zero. H was 17, I think, right? So 2 root 17 is our constant. That's a fourth point. And then solving it the rest of the way out. 
2 root h equals negative 1 fifth t plus 2 root 17. Um, we're going to divide everything by 2. So we have negative 1 tenth t plus root 17, and then h is equal to that squared. Um, and that's your fifth point for that one. Any questions there on that? Everybody good there? All right. And then part C, at what time T is the coffee pot empty? So now we're, we've got an equation here that we just found. We want to figure out when the height of this is zero. So we want to know when is negative tenth t plus root 17 squared equal to zero. Uh, that'll just be when negative one tenth t plus root 17 is zero. And that will be at t equals, subtract that to get negative root 17, then multiply by negative 10, make that a positive 10 root 17. And that one was just worth one point for part C. Any questions there on any of that? All right, let's, let's do mm, let's do this one. This will be a good one. So I'm gonna give you guys 15 minutes to do this one, and then we'll talk about it. And this will be the last one we do today. Sound good? You know what page that is? Um, let's see. The first one I asked you to do ten and eleven, right? Yeah. This one was should be page fourteen, I believe. Okay, yeah, it is. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm putting a fifteen minute timer on. We should have just a couple minutes at the end to talk about it. Ready? Go. So um, first off, we should note that any time when y is 1, the slope should be 0. So all of these should be slopes of 0. Make those look better, probably. Maybe. There we go. I feel a little better about that. Um, then let's see, at the origin at 0, we're going to have negative 1 squared, which is 1, and then cosine of 0, which is also 1, so we should have 1. And then at x equals 1, y equals 0, we're still going to get um, 1 here. If x is 1, this is cosine of pi, which is negative 1. And at negative 1, cosine of, uh, cosine of negative pi is or sorry, 0, negative 1. We're still going to have a 1 here, but the cosine of negative pi should be the same as the cosine of pi, should be negative 1. So this is again negative 1. <clears throat> and then at 1 for x, negative 1 for y, we're going to get negative 1 minus 1, should be negative 2 squared is 4. And then the cosine of <clears throat> pi, so that should be a negative 4, so pretty steep negative. Um, we're going to have the same thing at negative 1, negative 1. And then at 0, negative 1, um, we're going to have a positive 4. So it should look something like that. And one point for these ones and one point for these ones. Good or no? Good. Okay. 
Uh, part B says there's a horizontal line y equals c that satisfies this differential equation. Find the value of c. Well, we got to remember that these slope fields represent the solutions to the differential equation. Well, where is there a horizontal line in our slope field? It should be at y equals one. So we'll say c c is equal to one. And that was just worth one point there. Everybody good with that? Yeah. All right. And then for, for part C, we got to solve the differential equation. So I'm just going to separate to start with y minus 1 squared. And then we had cosine pi x. Is that right? Okay, so cosine pi x dx. So that's one point for separating your variables. And then this one, they gave you two points for properly taking your antiderivatives. So this is y minus one to the negative two. If you do the simple u sub on that, it just becomes negative one over u and they get one over y minus one. Um, and then the other side, integrate cosine pi x becomes one over pi sine pi x. And then we'll put our plus a constant. So one point for this, one point for this, and one point for this. Um, so then the next step is to use our initial condition. I didn't even look, what was our initial condition? When x is one, y is zero. So when x is one, y is zero, it gives us negative one over negative one. And then one over pi times the sine of pi plus a constant. Well, sine of pi is just zero. So our constant is one. And we got negative one over y minus one. In fact, I'm going to rewrite that just because I can. This should be that minus sign for <clears throat> one over one minus y equals one over pi sine pi x plus one. And we need to take a reciprocal of that. So like I said, I like to get a common denominator. So 1 over pi sine pi x plus pi over pi. When we take our reciprocal, we'll end up with 1 minus y equals pi over pi plus sine pi x. And add the y and subtract this gives us y equals one minus pi over pi plus sine pi x. And fifth point was getting the correct constant and sixth point was getting that actual equation. Any questions there? Everyone's good? Yeah. All right, that's where we'll stop.